your session. So our next featured speaker is Dr. Angel Hill. She's going to talk about thyroid secrets. And her gift for you guys is Wake Up to Wellness, Simple Morning Rituals for Hormone Balance. So welcome, Dr. Angel. So happy and excited to have you with us today. Oh, now you're, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, so thank you for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> you're so welcome. And if you need to screen share, you should have access. Yeah, so I am going to start that now. There we go. Let me. <clears throat> All righty, here we go. So we're going to talk about thyroid secrets today. We're going to talk about nutrition and lifestyle strategies to help the thyroid. And this is an area that so many women in particular, I find in the last 15 years that I've been in business really need help with. Um, the thyroid is kind of silent until it's not. <laughs> and so, you'll, you know, there'll be symptoms and you'll think there are other things. And then you find out, no, wait a minute, it's the thyroid. So we're going to talk about that today. But I do need to mention that I'm not a medical doctor nor a psychiatrist. The views of this workshop are my own. And please don't make any changes to your medications or supplements without talking to your healthcare provider. So um, who am I? I am Angel Hill. I have been in a business for more than a dozen years um, and serving about 7,000 clients in that lifetime, in that time. Um, you can find all about me on LinkedIn if you want to find out more about me, but I do have an online program, Alternative Health with Angel. And today we're going to talk about the thyroid. So some people don't even know where the thyroid is. So if you kind of think about your throat, it's right here by the throat. Um, when I was a kid, there would be older people that would have gorders and you'd see these big things on their neck. <laughs> and so that's not thyroid nodules. But if you think about the thyroid, it's definitely going to be around that neck area. And it's butterfly shaped um, and it sits right at your throat. And it's responsible for our metabolic and chemical processes in the body. So a lot of people think weight, right? When they're thinking that for sure. And I lost y'all here. There we go. Um, <laughs> it produces hormones that send messages throughout our body and um, it sleep, speeds up or slow downs our energy production as well. So when we're tired, it could be our thyroid. When we're gaining weight or not losing weight, it can be our thyroid. Here are some of the things. <laughs> so weight management, heart rate. That's a big one. If you're having like um, heart palpitations, that can definitely be a thyroid symptom. Uh, body temperature. A lot of times people are are too cold. Um, fertility. Thyroid is actually the number one thing I look at when I'm, I'm having a client that comes to me with fertility issues because we see that so often. And then other things that you don't see quite as much, but definitely do is digestion, brain development. Um, and the menstrual cycle as well can be really, so if you have heavy periods or um, your periods aren't coming like they're supposed to, that is a real big sign that thyroid um, issues could be happening. Now, 60% of women don't even know they have thyroid issues. It's called subclinical thyroid dysfunction. And we're going to talk about this in a little bit. But basically what that means is when you go to the doctor and they look at your um, thyroid levels, they'll say, oh, nothing's wrong. And the reason is they're looking at it from a disease standpoint. They're saying if you're not in disease at this standpoint, but subclinical thyroid means there's something going on in your thyroid. It's not working properly, but you're not in that disease state. So about 60% of women could possibly be in the subclinical thyroid dysfunction state. And about 90% of thyroid cases actually have autoimmune Hashimoto's, which is a more um, a significant autoimmune issue that basically long-term can um, eat away at your thyroid. And we really don't want that. So thyroid issues are something that are kind of on the down low. People don't really know about them as much as they should. Um, some of the symptoms I hear a lot is the cold frequently, the fatigue, the hair thinning. Um, even think about your eyebrows, the outer part of your eyebrows. If that's thinning, that's actually a side of thyroid destruction. Um, weight gain or weight loss, because that could be hyperthyroid dry skin, constipation, lack of motivation, and, and brain fog are all things that we'll see. Now, our risk factors, the older we get, the more likely we are to get it. And women are more likely than men. I will tell you that when it comes to this whole genetic situation, men can pass it down to women. I see this often that a father will not have really any outward signs of thyroid issues, but their daughters will. And then we'll check the dads and the dads like, like have maybe a low level and they just didn't even know it. Um, pregnancy and menopause are both really big risk factors because anytime we go through any hormonal change, that actually causes our thyroid some distress. So, and women go through a lot of hormonal changes in our life. So that's another reason why we see it more than men. 
Now, if you have a, a cut camera phone, you may want to go ahead and take some pictures of this. These are the thyroid hormones that your doctors should check. Okay. So normally when you go to the doctor, they're checking sometimes T4 and TSH. That's what they're normally checking, but there's so many other things they should be checking. So you want them to check that free T3. That's the active thyroid hormone. And that's a big one. We need to know what is happening there, right? You want them checking the um, T4, the free T4 that measures the amount of T4 that's available to your cells and tissues. So sometimes we have T4 going on, but it's not available. Then you also want them to get that total T4 checked. And we're going to more here. Um, reverse T3. Now this is an interesting one. Um, I rarely see this checked. And the reason is, is because they just don't think that this has any um, issues. But what I find is that reverse T3 is one of the first components that tends to go um, haywire when we're looking at the thyroid. So I can look at somebody and everything else may look okay, but that reverse T3 is not where I need it to be. And that tells me, hey, this person is about to go into hypothyroidism. We can do some things naturally to stop that. Now, TSH is the one that you normally hear getting um, tested, and that is something. Unfortunately for me, that's one of the last components I see change. So all the other stuff changes first. So this is kind of a last-ditch effort when, the, um, when they're checking this, I think. <laughs> and then two others that I'd love for you to get checked are um, the antibodies that go with thyroid. So these are the ones to tell you if you have Hashimoto's or Graves. And I particularly work with Hashimoto's. And like we said earlier, 90% of women that have thyroid issues have Hashimoto's. So that is an area that really needs to be taken care of. And this is an area that conventional medicine just really doesn't have a lot of options for. So you want to get that TPO checked and that ATA checked. Now, another issue that we'll see when it comes to antibodies is um, conventional doctors are looking for a certain number to say, okay, you have this autoimmune issue. But in functional and alternative medicine, we look at it as if you have any antibodies, that means that there's an issue going on and we need to address that. Um, one of the biggest thing I see with antibodies, by the way, is people with low um, vitamin D levels. And for me, vitamin D levels, I like to be at least at 75. So if you're someone who has low vitamin D levels, make sure to be getting those up with your doctor's help, of course. And so I just said we were going to be talking about the difference between conventional testing versus functional testing. So as we mentioned earlier, when we're testing conventionally, we're looking at a disease-centered situation. We're looking to manage the disease and everyone is treated the same. So your TSH is off. We're going to put you on level thyroxine, see how you do, that kind of thing. Now, one of the reasons the doctors look at few markers is because they're trying to save money on insurance. So insurance won't pay for a lot of different things. But if you take those pictures you just took of those components and take them to your doctors, a lot of time my clients will be able to get theirs taken. So it's worth a shot to take it to the doctor to see if you can't. If not, you could always find people to order it for you, people like me or somebody else. Um, the biggest thing I hear is right down here, your numbers look great. Nothing is wrong with your thyroid. I hear that constantly. But then when I take a look, functionally, as you see here on the right, we see things pop up. Now, not all the time. I don't want to constantly make sure somebody's sick. You know what I mean? We want to, but we want them to be working optimally. So when you look at this blood work functionally, we're looking for an optimal health-centered person. We want everything going well. Um, we want to prevent or reverse disease. So we just don't want to manage the disease. We want to reverse it. And we come up with personalized plans because everybody could be different. There could be different root causes. For instance, one person may literally have parasites going on that are causing the thyroid to be an issue. Another person may have H. pylori, which is a gut issue causing ulcers that also can cause issues with the thyroid. So you really have to get down and what, what is underneath this thyroid issue, what is going on. And that's the difference between conventional and functional doctors. Oh, excuse me. And I just wanted to show you, there's something called the hormone heaven um, framework. That's what I call it, but it's actually um, the way our hormones work. And so when you're thinking about hormones, cortisol is kind of our base hormone and then insulin, thyroid, and sex hormones. So basically cortisol and insulin have to be balanced before thyroid hormones can. So that's what we want to talk about next is how can we get that thyroid balance? Unfortunately, we have to go back a little bit, but that's okay because we can really get it working. Um, so I like minerals because minerals actually um, 
spark plug our hormones, right? So even though minerals are not a hormone, they're definitely there to precursors for hormones. Um, calcium and potassium play a pivotal role in regulating our thyroid activity. And sodium and potassium are needed by the cells to move thyroid hormones around, right? They got to get in and out. So an easy way to do this is to find like an electrolyte that doesn't have any sugar or artificial colors and do that every morning. That way you're getting those four um, foundational minerals of calcium, potassium, sodium, and um, magnesium to really spark plug those uh, hormones every day. So this is just a really easy option. A lot of my clients do it. And typically after one week, they're noticing a significant difference in just general health and especially energy levels. Now, cortisol, when we're talking about cortisol, we're talking about the adrenals, which are right on top of the kidneys. And they're basically our energy source in our body. And they're that base hormone we talked about. So they need to be balanced before anything else can be, right? And increases in cortisol levels as a result of stress, and we're all walking around stressed, <laughs> have been shown to affect thyroid hormone levels. So working on our stress, working on keeping those adrenals happy is really going to help um, our TSH, because that's where they really see that cortisol affecting it. And that's one of those numbers we talked about earlier. So one of the, one of the things you can do, you can drink water, particularly in the morning while you're doing that electrolyte. That's a good way to get your um, water in in the morning. Um, you could do some lemon and salt in there if you don't want to do an electrolyte. Make sure you get some sea salt because that's got some good minerals in it for you as well. And sea salt has been known to reduce cortisol and it also prevents dehydration. Um, I'm in Florida. We get lots of heat here. So lots of dehydration happening, but it happens in winter too. So just keep that in mind. Um, stress reduction. This is the hardest one for me. And it seems like for my clients too. Um, but, you know, find something that works for you. Meditation, prayer, yoga. Um, I love moderate exercise. Exercise. I get up every morning and walk. If I don't walk, I'm not, my brain is not working well. Nothing's working well for me. So, and just set some realistic goals. Um, I tell people consistency is the biggest thing. So if you can have one consistent, you know, habit a day, do that for a couple of weeks. When you've got that ingrained, then start on another habit. Don't start everything at once or nothing will get done. <laughs> Um, balancing your blood sugar is another way to work on that thyroid. So when our blood sugar spikes through the day, it actually causes issues with our thyroid. So a good way to keep that from happening is to eat protein for your first meal of the day. And preferably, I'd love you to eat protein in every meal, but think about getting about 15 to 30 grams of protein in your meal of the day. I got some eggs here. Eggs are about six grams each, just so you know. Um, the other thing you can do for balancing your blood sugar is just really watch those liquid sugars, things like sweet tea and soda and ice cream, even some pre-workouts can cause some issues. Um, I see this with women. I had a customer who huge, um, exerciser, just in really phenomenal shape, but she couldn't figure out what was going on. Long story short, her pre-workout was really causing some blood sugar issues. And we, when we identified that things have changed, she was having thyroid issues. She was getting um, kidney stones, all kinds of things were happening. And we changed one thing by getting rid of that pre-workout and found a cleaner one for her. And it really made a lot of difference. Now, as you can see here, this is that blood sugar roller coaster that happens. And when, every time we spike our blood sugar, we're causing all kinds of problems for our body, our thyroid included. Um, just as a side note here, every time our blood sugar spikes as well, it affects our brain. So check it out. This is off the subject, but if you took, um, put in a search engine type three diabetes, you'll actually find Alzheimer's. So those blood sugar spikes can cause issues with our brain as well. So we really want to be careful with those. Um, so some things you can do for blood sugar, you know, um, if you're an apple cider vinegar person, I am, um, do it before the meal or put it on top of your food. I literally put it on top of my, my food all the time. I little have a shirk shaker thing and I just shake my apple cider vinegar on top of my food. Um, eat your veggies first. That actually helps your body to process that sugar when it comes. Um, you can have them as an appetizer with some hummus or something like that. Um, after your meal, you can walk for 10 minutes. This is such a good option. It gets you moving. That sends endorphins to make you happy, but it also helps balance out that blood sugar and our thyroid loves that. So when you're thinking about the morning, you want to think about have your water and your electrolytes, your food then your coffee. So coffee can actually spike glucose levels if it's consumed without food. So make sure when you're having that coffee, you want to have that with your food. So one last note on blood sugar. Um, if you're familiar with Isabella Wentz, she is a famous writer who writes about Hashimoto's and adrenals and everything. 
And what she has done with her clients, um, what her clients have noticed the most is blood sugar balancing and hydration. So getting that water in, getting those electrolytes in in the morning and getting that blood sugar balance. And I have noticed that with my clients too. Typically within one week, we're noticing significant issues whenever there's some blood sugar, gain, sugar balancing and hydration going on. This thing on the left is talking about all the cancers that come from blood sugar. So just keep that in mind too. We, none of us want that. Um, so when you're talking about food plans for the thyroid, um, my favorite is Whole30. And if you're not familiar, Whole30 has actually just come out with a whole new option. Um, so check that out. They're changing some things up. But Whole30 is mainly looking at, I say it is what would Adam and Eve eat. But, you know, think about what our ancestors would eat. Lean meats, fish, fruits in season, vegetables, nuts and seeds, things like that. Some other options are the um, autoimmune protocol. That is very challenging to follow. So I recommend only doing that for a short period of time. Um, Dr. Hyman has a paleo diet that he calls Pegan because it's paleo and vegan together. So if you're um, more of a vegetarian option, that is a really good one for you as well. Um, some cooking tips though for you is, you know, cook your cruciferous vet. That's actually good for the thyroid. We always talk about we want raw vegetables, but sometimes when it comes to cruciferous things like cauliflower and broccoli, cooking it actually helps our body absorb it better and our thyroid can use those um, minerals and vitamins from it better. Uh, drinking bone broth. The reason why bone broth is so good for our thyroid is it's good for our gut. Anything good for our gut is going to be good for the thyroid. So keep that in mind. Um, I have a site here called Two F True Food Tech. Um, check it out. They have some really cool options on showing you processed foods. Um, getting rid of processed foods is so difficult, but this is actually showing you real life things that are at your grocery store that you may not think are processed that are. And it was quite shocking to me. Oh, hold on just one second here. Um, <laughs> make sure to get that kombucha in and the caffeine and just that regular sugar intake. You want less than 30 grams and limit that gluten and dairy. And then we're looking at circadian rhythm. So sleep is not just, the circadian rhythm is just not about sleep. It's about consistent bedtimes, making sure you get out in the morning with the sun. Um, when we can see the sun at several times during the day, it actually gives us a download to our brain to help us be able to go to bed at night because our body knows where we're at in that circadian rhythm. Make sure to take those 30 minutes um, before bed and not have any, um, oops, excuse me here not have any um, devices on and make sure your room is clean, no distractions because the thyroid really needs sleep to renew itself. Um, finally, I just want to talk quickly about environmental toxins, um, things like BPA, water bottles, fluoride, um, toothpaste, uh, deodorant, all these things are bringing toxins into our body. body. This is a real big one for me. If you follow me on socials, you'll hear me talk about this a lot. So they are very difficult on our thyroid. So be careful about that. Um, synthetic fragrances is another one. If you go to ewg.org, Org, the environmental working group, they have a great way of telling you things that are going to be hard on your body or not in a like yellow, uh, green and red format. So that's really helpful. So just keep all of this in mind. Um, and then this is essential oils that are really, really good for the thyroid. Some people ask me about this all the time. So lemongrass, clove, rose geranium, frankincense, and peppermint. And right down here, if you put that into a search engine, that'll give you the research on those essential oils. And this just tells you how to put it all together. If you want to take a quick picture of that, I'll hold for just one second. So quick actions, what can you do? Be gentle with yourself. Remember to eat at regular meal times so your body gets those nourishing foods, regular sleep times, that circadian rhythm because your thyroid really needs that sleep. Think about a five minute gratitude journal that's gonna help with the stress. Lymphatic drainage, if you're not familiar with that, you can look it up or give me a call or um, email and we can talk about that. Walking 10 to 15 minutes a day and keep, you know, even water filters on your shower when we're talking about those things that come at us, those um, environmental disruptors. So thank you. I am Dr. Angel. You can find me at Alternative Health with Angel or on the socials. And thank you so much for having me today. Hey, Angel, can you go back to the slide with essential oils? Yeah, no problem. Let me get so there. They can take a picture of that one. I saw some with their cameras out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, let me. There. So there's the essential oil thyroid blend. So if you're into essential oils and you have Frank, I have frankincense. I love frankincense. Um, you can make it this little thyroid blend. Um, if you have the essential oils available, any questions for Angel? Yeah, we do have a some minute, a couple. We do have some time. You have any questions? I know thyroid can be a little tricky. She'd mentioned those labs. A lot of times, your doctor will not look at the additional labs. Um, 
it's an insurance issue happened to my mom. She's like, well, Medicaid, we're already pay for these. I'm like, I need, what are your antibodies? What's your TPA? I'm like, I'm asking her these questions. Like, well, it's Medicaid. They're not going to test this. I'm like, well, we need to know. Yeah, it happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well, if anybody we're... does have questions, they can find me on socials. No problem. Yeah, absolutely. And I know it used to be back in the day, they didn't test thyroid till like you reach your forties and now they're testing it a lot earlier. You know, yeah, actually, I have just issue. started recommending at 20, I think people need to get a baseline and then yes. every five years after that. And if they start having symptoms, then definitely do it right away. But, but I discovered that with my daughter, she was 20 years old. We just did a basic test for everything and come to find out thyroid issues. So. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> yeah, can hit a lot of people. That's for sure. Um, and I know you, you mentioned limiting gluten and dairy, and I know <clears throat> oftentimes dairy can interfere with your thyroid. Um, as well. So she gave you some really great, you know, options when it can't comes to, you know, you got your essential oils, you got, you know, how do we eat? Definitely limiting your stress um, as much as you can. I know sometimes you can't, but do some stress management techniques to get yourself out of that state of stress. Any questions for Angel? I did post the link to her gift in the chat below. Somebody's um, asking about carrier oils. So a really easy one is olive oil, if you want to do that, or you can do fractionated coconut oil. That's another option. Yeah. Olive oil is usually found in everybody's house. That's why we say right. that. I know, right? <laughs> Just, grab your, Just grab that. Yeah. As well. And just on the um, essential oil thing, real quick, I need to mention that a lot of people, their first reaction is to put it on their thyroid, but it's best to put it on your feet. If you put it on your thyroid, it actually may be a little too strong. Yep. Yep. And just be mindful. You know, if you're, if you're one that you're a little sensitive to as well, um, start off a little bit at a time. I love, I love my essential oils. I swear by them. <laughs> yes. All right. I don't see have any questions. And then your gift. Um, what is your website, Angel? It's alternativehealthwithangel.com. All right. Let me see if I can. Do you want me to put it in the dot com uh it's popping up okay you're mentioning florida i'm like yeah i'm in central florida so oh, i I'm get the whole Pensacola. i'm up in the panhandle oh though. you're up higher yeah <laughs> your weather's a little bit different <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> your your weather's a little bit different um so thank you so much angel um for coming and presenting on thyroid um i'm curious of those who were actively listening do, how many have thyroid issues i'm just curious like how many of you have thyroid issues i know so i got we got a hand raise yeah my mom's one of them she's she's been battling it for years trying to get her meds right trying to do all the things yeah yeah and um, like we were saying, it used to be in the 40s, that was a baseline in your 40s. And now they're checking it a lot earlier. Um, and a friend of mine, she was in her 30s and uh, she was having some issues. They checked her thyroid. Guess what? You got low thyroid right now. It's shocking. <laughs> yeah. And I'm curious for you and, and the women that you serve, are you seeing a lot more Hashimoto's? Absolutely. And um, I would say my about 85 percent i think is what i discovered the other day when i was wow. doing just a quick a anecdotal yeah a lot and young i actually am working with two teenagers right now that parents had an idea something was going on with them and come to find out they're both hypothyroid and hashimoto's so it's wow it, so uh, so i'm curious in your opinion is that like genetic and lifestyle combined for hitting them such a young age or I think so. And also just, you know, the environmental toxins that are coming at us yeah. so much more than they ever have before. I really think that's part of it. And the food is just not as good as it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. That is so true. The toxic burden is increasing, I think, from year to year to year um, with that. And so if you're, you know, I'd mentioned a little bit with the toxic burden yesterday, um, but yeah, it makes sense. makes complete sense. Um, I used to work in a pediatric emergency room. So we were seeing some things way early and i asked the doctors i'm like what do you feel what what do you think is going on like is it in utero from mom is it like all of the above 
Yeah, definitely. I have a couple of people writing me. Um, some people are talking about scans they've had, or they no okay. longer had yeah. a thyroid. If you are on thyroid medicine or um, just definitely, if you're on thyroid medicine, please do not go off of it. <laughs> that is something you definitely need to work with your doctor with. So I just wanted yeah. to make that for sure. <laughs> I definitely help people who are on thyroid medicine, but my goal with them is not to get them off of it. My goal with people who aren't on thyroid medicine is to keep you off of it. But once you're on it, I definitely want you to work with your doctor on that. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so I no longer have a thyroid. Very interesting talk. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Angel. If there, We still have some time. You have more questions I, if you're directly messaging her as well we can talk a little bit more about the thyroid it seems to be hitting a lot of women nowadays um and like she said it's it's it hits before maybe you're getting symptoms right you know symptomology so get a bite get a baseline at least if you're younger see what Definitely. i did <laughs> And if you have men in your life that have issues with thyroid or you, they show signs, a lot of times doctors don't think about that. So maybe that's something you can say to them, Hey, ask them to get the thyroid check. Cause I've had young men in my true. office that didn't, yeah, that ended up in the hospital because they didn't, doctors said, Oh, nothing's wrong with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do, I, do you feel like it's because it's perceived as more of a women's issue? So that's why it gets overlooked more. I think so. Definitely. Just, it doesn't really happen as much in men. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome talk. Uh, they said they're excited so about the essential oil blend. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do have quite a few participants who are into essential oils for thank you for sharing that one. Can you go back to the slide with the testing, like that second slide with the TPO and the that way if they need to take a picture of that so that they can ask their physicians if they're having issues to maybe possibly look further into that. So okay, so there is the TPO and the ATA. Is that the one you're looking for? Yeah, yeah. So if you were looking to get a screenshot of this or a picture, um, now's your time. Like, because these are these are labs that your physician typically don't order. Um, so, but it's important to know as and well. As a general rule, um, if you're gaining weight or can't lose weight, it's usually Hashimoto's if there's an autoimmune, and if you're losing a lot of weight, it may be Graves' disease. And that's not always the case, but that's a good general rule. Okay, that's good to know. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. If you don't have any more questions, I'm just going to stop recording. Yeah.